Good evening. Welcome to this week's edition of Newsmaker Live with me, Kendall Burton. Today we're talking about the creative industries, and to help me do that is the consultant in the Ministry of Creative Industries, Christopher Hunt. Uh, all around the world, we've heard of the creative and uh, cultural economy and the increasing important role that it's playing um, in world economy. Um, perhaps before we go into how that is, maybe we can start with a definition of what creative industries is, because I suspect there's a lot of, depending on who you ask, um, it's, it varies. It's, it's very broad. It can be very um, restrictive. Um, well, first of all, good evening, and thank you for having me here, and good evening to all the people of San Lucia. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, happy independence to come. Um, the creative industries <coughs> is a new portfolio established by the, office, by the Prime Minister and this administration. What used to be formerly the Ministry of Education and Culture? Well, there was culture, and there still are cultural officers, but it was really sort of a management of the events calendar or the cultural calendar. Mm -hmm. There was CDF um, responsible for sort of um, bringing up that wellspring of, of talent and developing cultural aspects, whether it be arts and crafts, design, fashion, music, you name it. <coughs> Most countries that have developed a creative industries portfolio or ministry it has been born out of external forces mm -hmm. so you find that most of the colonies like Jamaica the discovery of Bob Marley has led to their tourism and entertainment ministry mm -hmm. you find that for example with uh, the advent of Pirates of the Caribbean you then got you then got um, the creative industries being attached to the, the Vincentian version of NDC mm -hmm. or Invest in Lucia um, with us and that's what I'm happiest about is that the government took a deliberate step without waiting for somebody to discover Rihanna or to come out with a Denzel Washington or St. Lucia kind of a thing mm -hmm. to create this ministry because we need another economic growth engine. Now we've seen right. agriculture and we can jump high, jump low. The fact is that St. Lucia is as small as many farms in Canada, the entire topography of St. Lucia. So you look at, we needed a, a way to compete with the rest of the world. Agriculture depends on exports. It depends on shipping, shipping lines, getting the, the bananas to England, getting them to Sainsbury's, the ripening rooms, and so mm. on and so forth. Tourism equally depends on shipping, that you're going to have to bring people to St. Lucia on flights. You have environmental levies and all of these different right. things. <coughs> However, with the advent of the Internet, we now have a, pl have a platform where we can compete with anybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. We're no longer restricted by our proximity to first world markets. Mm -hmm. We're no longer restricted by shipping, by our, our topography. We no longer, s uh, none of our geographic limitations apply right. because it comes down to intellectual properties. If you have an idea, simply put, an idea uh, for a song, a painting, a poem, that's your intellectual properties. If you want to monetize that, you want to figure out how to make a living from that, mm -hmm. then that's where the creative industries comes in. We are a facility. We are, uh, are trying to facilitate um, artists of all walks of life, as long as they have some degree of St. Lucian intellectual properties in whatever their creation is. It doesn't have to be totally original. It can be an innovation on an already existing product. And as long as there's St. Lucian-ness to it, mm -hmm. then it is our duty to take it and figure out how we can package it, how we can help you brand, how we can build a business model around you. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, <coughs> the average kid that's sitting somewhere in Miku or Deriso <coughs> that doesn't have money to take a bus to come to Castries to go to work at a particular bank or something like that, now can think in different dimensions so that they can, for example, design an app or they can do graphics for sale online. Right. We have a commercial that we use called sand writing. Mm -hmm. And it's a very simple principle that a young lady goes to the beach, she gets orders on her phone, she, she writes in the sand, she takes pictures of it, and she sells them and uploads them online through PayPal. And if she were to do 10 pictures a day, five days a week, which we have seen people been do doing, without any operational cost in terms of besides taking a bus and going to the beach, mm. she could make upwards of 5,000 EC a month literally just getting orders from global markets. Mm. She doesn't need to participate in the restrictive solution business model. She can participate globally. Mm. Somebody makes a song, it gets a certain amount of hits on YouTube. For example, Lebo Heights Production, a friend of mine, helped um, the Mr. Killer do um, Roly Poly. Right. The song gets a certain amount of hits on YouTube. He, the producer, and the artist, and the arrangers and so on are going to have to get paid not only for their lifetime, but much like you see in Jamaica, where the Jamaican government is paying Bob Marley's family for the rights to use Bob Marley, right. you find that literally for 50 years in some countries and up to 70 years in other countries, 
they they have they, they enjoy the royalties mm -hmm. so that right now doesn't matter what happens with Rihanna she is going to continuously for generations impact ba the Barbadian economy just because of the royalties generation mm -hmm. now <coughs> the creative industries were a small portfolio under the guidance of the minister honorable on Theophilus and of course PS Donovan Williams we're taking measured steps strategic approach we have programs that we need to initiate to develop people train capacity building we also have to take who's out there right now, mm -hmm. help them to get out of St. Lucia to penetrate um, uh, first world markets and global markets. We also have um, a number of areas and it's because the, creati the creative industries is so diverse mm -hmm. and because it changes so rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, example, I went to St. Joseph's Convent to speak and I told them, you know, a year ago a Blackberry was a good thing to have. It was a great phone and now mm -hmm. people look at you like you're carrying around uh, a, a piece of crud. So. Mm -hmm. And the children laughed at me because they said a year ago, six months ago, right? And mm -hmm. the truth is, because of its rapid change, it's not often respected. Now, because of its economics, uh, economic earnings potential, it needs to be respected. And I'm happy that this government didn't need anybody to come from England or Trinidad or anywhere mm -hmm. to tell us that we need to do this. We're doing it. And to an extent, there are already people out there making waves. Everybody from K.O. Philbert Sultan, mm -hmm. Aisha mm -hmm. Gustav, Tedison John, Boo Hingson. Many people don't recognize Boo Hingson as number four ranked guitarist in the world, mm -hmm. ranked higher than Santana. People don't recognize just how, po how <coughs> popular and powerful people like Luther Francois are. We don't recognize many of the people like Luigi Sentoma, Dunstan Sentoma, how they're recognized, and mm -hmm. uh, as we know, Nobel Laureate time, the Sir Derek Walker. Walcott, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, the argument is pretty simple. We cannot be more Jamaican than Jamaicans, more African than Africans, more Grenadian than Grenadian, more American than American, but we can damn sure be more St. Lucian than anybody else in the entire world. It is for us to stop apologizing for that and now take that and make it into something so that you may hear the guys down in Mabuya Valley, Subans and Mighty and, um, and General Bix and so on, and you hear the fellas singing Tosh Boda and everybody's outraged. But these guys can travel based on that. Mm. These guys are literally making market penetration in places like Martinique, French markets, markets that are key strategic allies to us, as you've just seen mm. today in terms of the signing of the accord in terms of OECS. Mm -hmm. So the creative industries now is going to harness that talent. Now CDF is looking toward more specializing in training and community development. We will take the next step in facilitation of business models and branding exercises for the artists, getting them to know what the EPA economic, economic par partnership with Europe is, what um, different um, opportunities may exist. For example, mm -hmm. you don't need visas as artists to perform in Canada, whereas in the States you may. Um, and also TIPA, the Trade Export Promotion Agency, where they are looking at everything from Baron Foods and Viking traders mm. all the way through to <coughs> artist exports so that you find people like Tennis and John going to Brass Fest and so on are being facilitated through that. So a tiered approach, a strategic approach, but most importantly, taking advantage of a global economy where creative industries, goods and services, now rank fifth in the global economy right. after minerals, <coughs> um, automobiles and so on, and the creative economy is almost double the size of the German economy globally. Right. So we have an opportunity, we have talent, and the best thing is most of the talent here has been neglected for generations. So we have a, a literal repository from everybody from Hilary LaForce and George Fish Alphonse all the way to a Ricky T and a Monster. Mm -hmm. We have that talent here, ready to go. Yeah. <coughs> I started out by asking you uh, for a definition of creative industries um, to sort of dispel some of the misconceptions and myths about what it really is. Um, but I suspect even within the artistic community, there's some misunderstanding. Um, I think people <coughs> got excited about the creation of a creative industries ministry. Um, but you can hear from some of the comments that they're a little disappointed because things haven't worked out the way perhaps they anticipated. Um, so they seem to have their own misconceptions about what your ministry is supposed to be doing. Um, to what degree have you addressed that? Um, whether by meeting those artists and under what uh, forum? Well, the first, the first <coughs> thing is that there must be a public awareness campaign. Mm -hmm. You must develop your policy documents. Um, we have gone through extensive process with people like um, consultant Eves Renard to mm -hmm. go through defining what the creative industries is. Many people believe that whether it's selling phone cards or taxis or buses and so on, <coughs> that these are all creative or bringing in um, studio equipment is just creative industries. But the underlying factor, the common denominator has to be intellectual properties. 
somebody cannot just say that they have a nightclub and therefore they're bringing in equipment mm -hmm. and that's creative industries. There must be some degree of a solutionness or creative endeavor, whether it's the person in the film is an actor, the person in the film <coughs> is doing the musical score, the person mm -hmm. is producing the film. There must be somewhere in the value chain. Mm -hmm. There must be something. Now, I have heard of people saying that we are not, we haven't done enough. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact is, if you're starting a new portfolio, just think to yourself that, for example, Carnival started in 1948. We've only just done the first economic impact assessment of Carnival last year. Mm. These are milestones for us. But of course, in a time where you have an instant generation who can simply go on their phone and WhatsApp their friends in Canada, you recognize that people don't have the level of patience that they used to. Mm. Some of the criticisms are that I am not the right person for the job. Well, mm. let's look at the big news. You're <laughs> right. I'm not the right person for the job. I don't pretend to be the right person mm. for the job. There are always better people. It's a question of who's willing, who's going to go and do the dirty work, who's going to go and sacrifice their own creative ideas mm -hmm. to make sure that they learn and they grow and they develop in lockstep with the industry. So I'm very happy to be given the opportunity not only to, not only to demonstrate where I can be effective, but also to demonstrate where we can work together and we can grow the sector along with myself and the capacity of the ministry. Yeah, precisely what you're saying, you're working together. Um, I guess what I was trying to get at is, are you still, in, in your efforts to um, educate and inform everybody, the public, including the artists, mm -hmm. um, dealing with artists on an individual basis? Because I've heard a lot of talk about artists coming together, <coughs> and whether it's um, fashion designers forming a trade association, you know, forming these groups, you know, and having to deal with a ministry like yours mm -hmm. as a collective, well, first of all, we have done a certain amount of focus groups. We've done mm -hmm. certain um, interventions where, for example, we've met with uh, groups of musicians at places like Baywalk and so on, conference, um, mm -hmm. conference centers, Bay Gardens and so on. We've had a series of workshops everywhere from what is now Capella Discovery mm -hmm. in formulation of our policy documents. Mm -hmm. We've had consultations around the country. As we speak right now, we have the knowledge series going on where uh, Mr. Peter Lord, former DPS in the Ministry of Commerce, is now mm -hmm. dealing with the, with the southern component and cohort of um, business and investment and, tr and business branding for artists um, from across all walks, whether it be music, dance, fashion, you name it. We did that in Castries. We had the graduation, um, little certificates, presentation, and so on, mm -hmm. so that we recognize within the entire sector there's a need for business development. Now, unlike agriculture or tourism, where even though you may have competing hotels or competing farmers, mm -hmm. they come together as a collective. Right. The creative sector has been notorious for its fractured approach. People can tell you of the number of efforts that have been made, even my own with Tempest, to bring artists together. But the creative industries is a large number of individuals, a large group of individuals, mm -hmm. individual egos. And I often say there's a lot of ego management because everybody thinks they're Rihanna, they're Rihanna everybody thinks they're Beyonce, mm -hmm. everybody thinks they're the next big thing. But then the problem is, how do they see the creative industries? One of the issues that we have to get over is what, what obtained in the past. And that was both administrations where it was a sort of token approach. There was no strategy. Mm -hmm. My nephew so-and-so is a friend of a minister, so that's why he's getting a bligh. Right. And we didn't want to be a portfolio or a ministry of blighs. We needed to have some sort of strategic approach. This is the public's money. And in times when resources are scarce, mm -hmm. you can't just decide, OK, well, I like so-and-so, so that's why I'm going to give them a bligh. A lot of the artists believe that it is the government and it is the business and private sector's um, duty to make them a success, mm -hmm. that they don't need to have business acumen. Well, sorry to say, but everybody from Adrian Auger to, to Boo Hingson stands in stark contrast to that as people who can do business and have a creative side or use their creativity to, to input their business. Mm -hmm. Now. The average artist is not making bank deposits. The average artist is not registering themselves as a business or company. Mm -hmm. They are not treating themselves as a brand. They don't care what font their name is in, unlike somebody like Beyonce or Rihanna, what color scheme, what photos go out of them, mm -hmm. what music they put out, when they put it out. Um, you just, there's no, there's an, uh, an the, the problem with the creative sector is that you're trying to give structure to instinct. Mm -hmm. So a lot of right. these artists are resistant to that. They would like to come into a, a portfolio, come and sit down and say, Yao Hunt, gotta hear my song, which mm -hmm. I won't listen to because it's not about me and I'm not, I'm not um, Jay-Z to decide whether you are a success or not. Mm -hmm. It's my duty to help you no matter what. They come in and they want to be able to say some nice words to you and you find a way to give them money or give them assistance. The, whereas they may be very deserving of that assistance, it can't work that way. But we have to meet them halfway. So we develop 
policy documents, we develop registration forms, we help them with things like how to prepare um, proposal documents so right. that even if they don't get assistance through our ministry, they may go through commerce and so on. And we also help them in terms of the groupings that have come along. And one of the myths is that there aren't groupings. The Creative Development Network, textiles manufacturers and producers, d fashion designers has come together. Mm. You have a number of, of artists who have come together. There are producers who have come together. Echo, whether um, we like it or not, even if it's just through economic gains, has brought together a number of artists. Right. So certain things are gelling, but you have to recognize that artists reserve the right to not like each other. Mm -hmm. I always remember Dunson and Doma told me, no artist likes any other artist, even if they like their work. Mm -hmm. So you find that there's a lot of conflict and you find people coming to you wanting to tell you more about what they don't like about somebody else that you may be helping than trying to pursue their own success. Now we had uh, an initial year an allocation, mm. and even that is tricky because I had to learn the hard way that an allocation may not necessarily mean that you get the full amount. Okay, l l let's talk a little more about that. We do for our first break. Let's take that break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the economics um, of your ministry. This is Newsmaker Live. My guest this evening, Christopher Hunt, the consultant in the Ministry of Creative Industries. We'll be right back. <laughs>